you're afraid that because you've experienced derealization for so long, which is feeling disconnected from the material world, disconnected from existence, from reality, that you won't be able to recognize what normal feels like. You won't be able to recognize what feeling connected feels like. And that makes you feel very, very, very out of control. And it makes you afraid. It makes you feel trapped. Because if I can't recognize what normal feels like, then that means my current reality, which is feeling unreality, feeling disconnection from reality, will become my new normal, which obviously is incredibly debilitating for you. So with that being said, we need to address this fear. And I want to encourage you a lot. And I've been wanting to do this video for a while because this is one of the most common fears that people have with derealization. Now, I want to be clear, this does extend to depersonalization, feeling out of body as well. You can fear that you'll never feel connected to your physical body again because you felt so disconnected for so long. Or maybe you, you fear that you won't be connected to your... You won't be able to recognize what feeling connected to your identity feels like because you feel just so disconnected from your identity. You feel like a different person. But I want to specifically speak about derealization because that seems to be where this fear is most prevalent, specific to I don't feel connected to reality. I don't even remember what it feels like to be connected with reality. That was months or years ago. And thus, I won't even recognize whenever normalcy, connectedness hits me because I don't even know what normal is anymore because that fear debilitates people. Okay. Let me start by saying everyone with prolonged derealization experiences this fear. This is a very, very, very common fear. And the reason why I want to show you how common that this is is to help reduce some of your anxiety about it. Because one of the most debilitating things about some of these irrational fears that come from depersonalization or derealization are the belief that you're alone in this experience. It's one thing if a lot of people are going through what you're going through, but it's a whole nother thing if it's only you. And it's ironic that pretty much everybody that comes to me for coaching or, or help from me in some way, they think that they're the only person experiencing what they're experiencing. And they also think that they're the exception to the rule that you can recover. And I'm like, if every single person believes that, <laughs> that they're the exception to recovery, and if every person believes a lot of these irrational fears, well, then maybe that shows that these are just very common irrational fears, and, and, and it doesn't mean that they're true. So by showing you that so many people experience them, I hope that that shows you that you're not alone, and that just because this fear seems real, it doesn't make it true. And you can overcome this fear. Look at me. Get out of the way, Mike. You can overcome this. All right, my friend? You're going to beat this. All right? So with that being said, I had a, had a client today, actually, who, who asked this exact same statement. That, that I, could, I, could, I knew that's what they were going to say whenever they got two words into it. But what if I don't recognize normal because I felt so abnormal for so long? You know, what if... What if I've been so disconnected from reality for so long and I've forgotten what normal feels like that I won't even recognize normal? And I smiled and I was like, well, just so you know, you're about the fifth person this week that's told me that. And this person was very encouraged to hear that and that, that's why I knew I needed to do a video. So you're not alone in this. Very common fear. Number two, what you need to know to help you not be so afraid of this is that this fear is based upon your brain's desire to adapt. Your brain is in panic mode right now. You are mentally, physically, or emotionally fatigued beyond what you've probably ever experienced. You're experiencing more stress than you've ever experienced in your life. And your brain is looking at all this and is trying to help you by preparing you to live like that forever 
that's what our brain does. Whatever circumstance that we're currently experiencing, our brain will immediately start to say, well, what if it's forever? And then we'll start to visualize the current circumstance being forever as an adaptation mechanism to prepare in case that happened. But the problem is that our brain is trying to help, but it's actually hurting us in the sense of we start to believe that this temporary circumstance is going to be forever. And we start to flow with that question, oh no, what if what if this is forever? What if I don't beat derealization? Oh no, what if what if I've been so derealized for so long that I don't even know what normal feels like? And then, you know, everybody's saying, Oh, you're gonna feel normal again, but I don't even know what normal feels like anymore. So what if I can't and you just go down that rabbit hole and you feel totally out of control, and then fear increases and then logic decreases, and then all of a sudden you're stuck in a loop. Where it's actually a lot of the a lot of the reason why you're overwhelmed all the time, not a lot, but at least one of the factors, is this fear. Is this a rational fear that's keeping your your stress level spiked? That's one of the layers of this onion that needs to be peeled for you to start to lower your stress, lower mental, physical, and emotional fatigue. And so you need to understand that your brain is simply trying to help you. But just because your brain is trying to help you and is presenting this possibility of derealization lasting forever, and even though it seems logical that, oh no, I don't recognize normal, I wouldn't be able to recognize it if it came to me, so, so thus I'm incapable of recovering. It doesn't mean that that's actually going to happen. It doesn't even mean that that's logical. It's actually very illogical, as I'm going to explain in a second. And this is not just with this specific fear with derealization. This is our brain all the time. Our brain is always presenting us with these negative what-if scenarios. Oh, no. What if, what if that car pulls out in front of you? Oh, no. What if you fall down those stairs? Oh, no. What if this negative thing happens? Your brain is always observing the situation your sensory environment and also our experience as well and is trying to help us cope just in case that current experience is forever and we feel that and we're like oh crap and then we play that movie in our head of it happening forever and it feels so real that we just assume it is real but it's just your brain trying to protect yourself and once you realize this i know for me once i understood this my brain will tell me, oh, no, what if this negative thing happens? And I'm like, wait, 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 that's just a possibility. It doesn't mean that it's a probability. And once you start to confront your brain's desire to adapt and present you with all of these negative scenarios, it makes your life a lot better. And you can challenge your brain in the sense of that's a possibility, but it's probably not going to happen. Sorry, brain. I'm going to visualize the best case scenario. So the third thing that you need to know this is very, 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 very important. Your ability to feel normal again isn't contingent on your ability to remember what normal feels like. Your ability to feel normal again isn't contingent on your ability to remember what normal feels like. The current belief that you have is that because you can't remember what normal feels like, that you won't recognize whenever your normal connectedness to reality happens because let's say you're doing some sort of effective strategy and thus because you can't recognize normal you're you're literally stuck with feeling abnormal but here's what you need to know we only have two general states that we can be in and it's it's a huge generalization but i'm doing this for the sake of simplicity we're either in a state of survival or we're in a state of safety a state of survival would be fight flight freeze response a state of safety would be where we're calm not saying that there's no stress necessarily because i think that's just part of being human is we're going to stress out every now and then but overall you feel connected what you would call connected. There's enough dopamine and serotonin flowing through your blood that you feel a sense of connectedness. And also there's something called your social engagement system uh, is, is turned on. So you connect easily with other people and you feel connected more to your environment and, and to, to just life in general. 
But the moment that you start to go into a state of survival, your social engagement system, the thing that allows you to feel connected to people and to places and to reality starts to shut down. And it's replaced with escalating sensations of disconnection. The more that you enter a state of survival, the more disconnected that you're going to feel from pretty much everything. As a defense mechanism, because as you escalate in these survival states, your brain believes that you are moving towards being eaten by a tiger, which is very painful, and thus it would be advantageous to not feel the pain of being eaten by a tiger. And the best way for that to happen is to feel totally disconnected from either your body or reality or from your emotions or all of those things. But nonetheless, what you need to know is that once you get out of a state of safety, the only other option is a state of connectedness. By default, whether you remember what normal feels like or not, you will return to a state of connectedness by default of not being in a state of survival, which is fight, flight, freeze response. There's only one other experience to return to. There's no third options. So your focus should be on getting out of a state of survival and trusting your body's ability to heal itself. Just like if you broke your arm, you wouldn't have to understand or remember what it felt like to have a non-broken arm. Let's even say you broke both of your arms. And then let's say you were just really clumsy and you kept tripping over something and you kept breaking your arms over and over again for six months or a year or something. Obviously, that would never happen. And you had you had broken arms for so long that you forgot what it felt like to not have broken arms. If you put those arms in a cast, even though you don't remember what it felt like to have healed arms, normal arms. You see those bi that bicep flex? Oh, son, look at that. Oh, I'm going to break the camera with all this flexing. <laughs> anyway, your body's still going to heal itself. Once again, your ability to feel normal and connected again to reality isn't contingent on your ability to remember what connectedness feels like. Your body knows how to heal itself. The problem is that there are certain conditions for healing that are not being met, namely being in a state of survival. If you're in a state of survival, you're not in a state of safety. And whenever you're not in a state of safety, you're not in a state of healing. A state of safety is what allows your body to return to homeostasis and to take you out of these defense mechanisms that are producing disconnection from reality and from your body. So how do you get out of a state of, of survival? Well, you have to reduce mental, physical, and emotional fatigue as much as possible, assuming you're in the freeze response especially. That's due to extreme fatigue and extreme stress that is escalated to the point that it's literally a traumatized state, and you've accessed the trauma coping mechanisms of either depersonalization or derealization. So because you're so fatigued, it makes you more easily anxious and more easily stressed. So there's the buildup now of stress and anxiousness and fatigue to the point where your body just numbs you out. It just makes you feel just totally disconnected because once again, your brain thinks that a tiger is eating you. So might as well make it as numb and painless as possible. So. With that being said, the more that you reduce mental, physical, and emotional fatigue, the less anxious that you're going to be, the less stressed that you're going to be. And there are some things you can do to, to directly confront anxiety and stress, of course. But a, a lot of the reason you're so anxious is because you're so fatigued mentally, physically, and emotionally. And if you start to resolve the mental, physical, and emotional fatigue, you will automatically start addressing a large chunk of this stress and anxiety that is built up in your life. Because the more fatigued that you are, the more sensitive the amygdala in your brain becomes and, and the more susceptible you are to becoming anxious because you're weaker. You don't have as much resources to make you strong to confront flowing with stress and anxiety. But with that being said, there's I think one more thing I wanted to talk about. Okay, this is very important. Very, 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 very important which most people statistically have already dropped off because people only watch 
thirty percent of the video, and I don't know why that is, but it, it is what it is. It'll always I think it's the attention spam because of the stupid Facebook news feeds. If you have held on to the end, I want you to comment below and I want you to tell me that I've held on to the end because I'm gonna send you a brand new Lamborghini. Right here. Everybody gets one of these. You get a Lambo. You get a Lambo. You get a Lambo. Ha <laughs> ha That was not funny. Okay. Last thing that's very important. You will know what normal feels like whenever it comes. You fear right now that you will not know what normal feels like, but you will. Because it's absolutely opposite of what you're experiencing. I have clients tell me all the time, they're like, hey, I've been experiencing depersonalization or derealization. The other day I got like a 30 second break and it was the most amazing thing ever. <laughs> You'll notice it. And I, I told a client this today, this example that, that I came up with, I didn't come up with this example, but I used this example that I think is pretty good. If I walked up to you, no, no, not me, I wanna take me out of this. If somebody walked up to you and punched you in the face, let's say like a big biker dude, like 300 pounds, leather vest, tattoos everywhere, <laughs> boom, knocked you right in the kisser. Is there any possibility that you wouldn't notice that? You're gonna notice. You just got hit in the face by a biker bro or girl. And likewise, whenever you go from experiencing constant derealization or constant depersonalization and suddenly you feel connected to your body or suddenly you feel connected to reality, it is literally like it hits you in the face in a good way in this case because you're actually feeling connected, but I'm saying it's that impactful. You cannot miss it. I remember years ago, whenever I started to change what was happening with my body and my focus and, and just reducing overall fatigue like I teach you guys, and I started to get like 30 minute breaks from DPDR. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I can't even believe it. It was so different than the sensations of disconnection that I was experiencing on a constant basis. I there's, there's just no way that you're going to miss it. But once again, you don't have to worry about not missing it because your body knows how to heal itself. Your body knows how to make you feel connected again if certain conditions are met, which is being in a state of safety, which is being out of extreme mental, physical, and emotional fatigue and extreme stress that is keeping you in a traumatized state. And once you're out of those of that state of overwhelming stress, overwhelming mental, physical, emotional fatigue, then you'll drop below a traumatized state, and then the trauma coping mechanisms will by default shut off, and then you'll start to start to go into a state of safety. You don't even have to be fully in a state of safety to get DPDR to shut off. You don't have to fully overcome stress. You don't have to eliminate all mental, physical, and emotional fatigue in your life. You just have to get out of the extreme states of fatigue, the extreme states of of stress in order to get out of this and yep all right hold on let's see what else i got um yeah last thing is i remember you know i went several years even you know have, i had two years of depersonalization realization in my life at one point in time but i spent like five six seven eight nine ten years of my life guys with just generalized anxiety before i really got a handle on it and I remember the moments of feeling normal within that, that time period very, very clearly because it was so different. One time, uh, this was God, and maybe like 2010 or something, but my dad invited me to play like Frisbee golf or something like that. And I had just kind of not done many sports and not gotten out that much. And I was just anxious pretty much all the time. And I remember feeling the sunlight on my skin. And I remember the, the feeling of just connectedness and just the, the fun of it and, and just feeling connected to just nature. And, and, and this wasn't even a time of, of derealization, depersonalization, but just generally speaking, it was opposite of an anxious state. I felt just, just in, in, in sync with life again. I felt like I did long before the anxiety started to happen and it felt amazing but then after that day of course the anxiety came crashing back because i didn't have an intentional strategy to keep it away but what i'm telling you is that feeling connected 
and feeling not anxious or fi- or feeling not depersonalized is so different than being depersonalized or derealized that y- there's no possible way that you're going to miss it. Even for a few seconds, you will most likely notice it. There's a chance that you wouldn't, but I'm saying eventually you'll notice. Like what could happen, one possibility is you go like 10, 20 minutes, you're not really thinking about it and you are feeling normal. But then whenever you look back, you're going to notice it. I'm saying eventually you will notice it. You can't not notice it. It's it's such a different state than the state that you're currently in. So you don't have to worry about it. And you need to be focusing your time on what you are in control of, which is getting out of a state of survival, fight, flight, freeze response, and into a state of safety. And once again, you do that by reducing mental, physical, and emotional fatigue, reducing stress as much as possible. And there are thousands of different tools out there that will help you accomplish that. Of course, you can go to my course, (laughs) I said course twice, dprecovery.com. I list out several of those tools that you can use to radically reduce mental, physical, emotional fatigue, uh, anxiety, stuff like that. Also, I've just started, well, I didn't just start it, but I just announced uh, my inner circle. I've had about 13 people for, uh, for several months now, but I decided to expand it. Now we've had an explosion of membership, but if you want bi-weekly Zoom coaching with me where I can help you apply some of these tools uh, that are needed to reduce mental, physical, emotional fatigue, stress, um, you'll get encouragement from me. Even you'll get access to a Facebook messenger group. Every day I'm sending out audios to my members where I'm encouraging them and I'm building them up, giving them tools for recovery. And it's only if you're really serious about recovery, but it is ridiculously inexpensive okay this month this month it's a monthly membership you can cancel at any time you may stay for a month you may stay for a year you're you're welcome to do whatever you'd like it's literally less than a dollar a day i've i've made this so accessible for everybody and i want to give you a place to get in front of me ask questions be encouraged by me while I can also support my family and pay my bills and I've made it very affordable so if you're interested in the inner circle there's a link below I am gonna have to cap it eventually because you know I can only do so many uh, meetings uh, for sure but there is space right now and I would love for you to be a part of it again also my course dprecovery.com I list out step by step how to overcome DPDR check that out that's it yep where are we out on time 22 minutes not too bad. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Oh, yeah. Click like. Subscribe. I'm supposed to say that at the beginning, but I never do because I suck at marketing. <sighs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> you guys have a good day.